So, I revealed in the last episode that Merida is my favourite Disney princess, but I want to make one thing clear. I acknowledge that, objectively speaking, Brave is a weak film. The story's not particularly interesting, the structure and pacing are patchy, and the premise has not only been done before, it was done badly. Why Pixar felt the need to rip off Brother Bear, of all things, I'll never understand. What pulls Brave through, however, is the animation, which is smooth and stunning from frame one, and the characters. If there's a weak one, I've yet to identify them. From the bear killing king who loves a laugh, to the mischievous triplets, to every single suitor and the leaders from each of the clans, they are all unique, hilarious, identifiable and believable. And Merida is no different. On the surface, Merida's no great deviation from the typical Disney princess. She's fed up with being a royal, craves independence, is at loggerheads with a parent, has a pet, etc, etc. She checks a lot of the boxes for being a boring carbon copy. But, like Rapunzel, she transcends the cliches by being an enjoyable, three-dimensional character. Unlike Rapunzel, she also has a veneer of realism, and this, in my opinion, is what elevates her to the best. Rapunzel seemed to act inappropriately for her age and situation. I don't really hold it against her or even the film. It's a fairy tale, it's allowed to suspend disbelief. Brave, however, despite having fantastical elements, is much more grounded in reality. Up until now, I think Disney teenagers were portrayed more like young adults because, to some degree, we'd accepted that we'd rather see role models from the House of Mouse rather than real people. They could be flawed, sure, they could be bratty or obnoxious or rebellious, but more often than not, their arc was resolved by them apologising to someone more powerful who would then fix the problem for them. Merida is the exact opposite. Not only does she have to fix the problem by herself, she doesn't even apologise for her awful behaviour until after she believes it's too late. Oh, and her behaviour is awful. She barely even tries to learn new skills that she's not interested in. She begs for independence but still acts childishly. She steals buns before dinner. She wrecks her room to vent her anger. She's so awful, she assumes she's in trouble when she hasn't done anything bad. What did I do now? And doesn't take responsibility when she has. It's not my fault. It's not my fault. She'd rather let her kingdom go to war than do something she doesn't want to do. Then she turns her mother into a bear. All this might be sounding like I actually dislike Merida, but you know what this all adds up to? A 16 year old girl, which is what she is. More specifically, it's what I was. The similarity is eerily uncanny, and though I'll forever praise Merida for being an accurate teenager rather than a teenager acting like a 20 something with an attitude problem, I can see that it's entirely plausible that my intense affinity with Merida may be clouding my judgement. But if you were ever a 16 year old girl, I defy you to look back and deny that you don't feel some affinity too. Yeah, the whole point is that Merida doesn't want to get married, so I'm going to have to scrap this segment and do something else. And there's only one thing that makes sense. I thought about making two separate episodes for Merida and her mother, Queen Eleanor, but their stories are so tightly woven together, literally, that it makes sense to look at them together. Disney mother figures tend to fall into two camps, evil or dead. It's rare to see a Disney mother on screen as a main character who's actually decent. She's very prim and proper, fussy and irritable, but all this can be traced to her loyalty. She clearly cares very deeply for her kingdom, and she's only so picky because she wants it to be a pleasant place to live so it can flourish and thrive. This loyalty, however, comes at the cost of drifting from her family. We see at the beginning how invested she is in her little girl, how much love and attention she gives her, Years later, she's too busy arranging a suitor for Merida to take an interest in what she's been doing, or even her husband's opinions. She's so focused on how things are supposed to be that she can't open her mind to what could be, which leads to disagreements, arguments and fights. This scene plays the distance between Eleanor and Merida extremely well, and shows that a parent can be wrong, even when they're right. Merida! Merida! I want to congratulate Pixar on continuing their amazing streak of showing us that adults are just as flawed as kids in an understandable and sympathetic manner. 
It almost makes up for the Cars franchise. Oh, for the love of haggis. I'll have to do something else for this, too. Okay, I can see that both Merida and Eleanor do sort of have dreams, but they're not the typical Disney dreams we're used to. Eleanor wants her daughter to be married to comply with tradition. Merida doesn't give a toss about tradition and is having none of it. But obviously it's not possible for both these dreams to come true. The subtextual dream for both of them is to be close again after drifting apart. This dream is realised after Merida's attempt to change her fate horribly backfires, and they're forced to flee together, looking after each other and reforging their bond. It's... not done perfectly. I really love that both characters learn from the other. Merida implements her mother's calm diplomacy, where she normally would have screamed and fought to get her way, and later Eleanor uses brute strength to save her family. But the story was juggled by so many directors, it's little wonder that the plot balls scattered all over the floor. They get lost in side plots and unfinished stories, but had these two had more focus, I think the movie as a whole, and the resolution in particular, would have been much stronger. I've been banging on about Brave for about six minutes now, and I've barely begun to scratch the surface. It fascinates me. Even the stuff that doesn't work doesn't piss me off to the extent it usually does. It does still piss me off, but it's a more interested kind of pissed off. For example, Sleeping Beauty frustrates me because Aurora was an airhead nobody who was somehow the titular character, but it would have taken a full rewrite to fix all its problems. Brave frustrates me because it was so close to being brilliant, all it needed was a few tweaks and cuts. Just one or two more edits to smooth over the joins left over by its multitude of directors. The metaphor within it worked so perfectly for itself, I'd almost think it was intentional. Mend the bond torn by pride. I'm not certain Brave is the title I would have picked for this movie. It's not that Merida isn't brave, but that's by far not her primary character trait, although I suppose the marketing would have been harder on a movie called Bratty. Actually, that's not fair. Marie was Bratty. Merida is... well, 16. I keep saying it because it's true. She's one of, if not the, most accurate and relatable teenagers Disney has ever produced, and she, and in fact all of Brave's characters, deserved more than they got. I really hope Pixar creates another official princess in the not too distant future. Just imagine it, a Pixar princess movie with as much care and attention as The Incredibles or Toy Story. But to be fair, Disney is catching up fast. Join me next time for Vanellope and Calhoun from Wreck-It Ralph.